Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before And they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Kerhapuk. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations. And Job died, old and full of days. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able from all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints his high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho, and as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. 
Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. They called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The movie Rudy, which I highly recommend, is based on the true story of a young man named Daniel Rudy Rudiger. Rudy lives in Joliet, Illinois, back in the late 1960s. And he dreams of playing football at Notre Dame, but he lacks the grades and the money to attend and the talent and physical stature to play major college football. So, the five foot six, 165 pound Rudy enlists a caring priest as his spiritual advisor who helps him to enroll in nearby Holy Cross College. The priest feels for Rudy, and he wants very much for Rudy's prayers to be answered. At one point, Rudy has run out of options. He's desperate. And so he goes and sits in church. The priest sees Rudy sitting there in a pew and approaches him. And the priest says, taking your appeal to a higher court? And Rudy replies, I'm desperate. If I don't get in next semester, it's over. I'm done. Notre Dame doesn't accept senior transfers. Well, you've done a hell of a job, kid, chasing down your dreams. Who cares what kind of job I did? If it doesn't produce results, it doesn't mean anything. The priest looks at Rudy kindly and says, I think you'll discover that it will. Maybe I haven't prayed enough, Rudy says. I'm sure that's not the problem. Praying is something we do in our time. The answers come in God's time. Have I done everything I possibly can? Can you help me? Rudy asks the priest. The priest smiles and says, In 35 years of religious studies, I've come up with only two hard, incontrovertible facts. There is a God, and I'm not Him. Now here's an educated man, a priest who's spent his whole life in service to God. What kind of answer can he give people who want to know about the Lord? There is a God, and I'm not Him. Now, if we were to ask Job what he knows about the Lord, I suspect this would also be his answer. I know there is a God, and I'm not him. After chapter after chapter of wrangling with his wife and with his friends and with God, Job learned to resubmit his life to God's sovereign rule. Actress Marilou Henner once said, the key to life is how well you deal with plan B. Now, 
most of us have a plan A in mind for our lives, don't we? We have a roadmap for our own success and happiness. At 22, I'll graduate from a top-notch university. At 25, I'll be happily married to an attractive, intelligent spouse. By 35, I'll have two perfect children and a dog that never makes messes in the house. By 40, I'll be vice president at my firm. By 60, I'll retire and travel around the world. I'll always be healthy, vigorous, and financially secure. But what happens when plan A falls apart? What did Job do when his life fell apart? When the roadmap for a great life suddenly took a savage detour? He questioned God. He listened to God's answer. And then Job resubmitted his life to God's sovereign care. My ears had heard of you, Job said, but, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. In today's lesson, Job is recognizing his humility before the everlasting God. And he's saying, before I saw you, I thought I had all the answers. I thought I could stand in judgment of your ways. But now that I have seen you, I repent and I ask for mercy. And I return control of my life to you and to your plan. This is the sum and the substance of the believer's response to pain and suffering. We turn control of our lives over to God. Sheila Walsh is a Christian author and singer. Although she counseled numerous people, Walsh did not share her troubles with others. And finally, after many years of inner turmoil, Walsh checked herself into a psychiatric hospital and got some help. In an interview afterward, Walsh remarks about that time in her life, saying, the greatest thing I discovered is that sometimes some of God's most precious gifts come in packets that make your hands bleed when you open them. But inside, that's what you've been longing for all your life, to be fully known and fully loved. Have your hands bled lately? Has your heart? Has a friend betrayed you? Has a loved one left? Are you facing an uncertain future? All you can see is that the perfect plan for your life has crumbled like a house of cards. But is there some joy hiding there in the pain? Can God's grace reach you even in your darkest hour? Violinist Itzhak Perlman was performing at Lincoln Center when one of his violin strings broke. He continued to play, though, improvising new arrangements of the music in order to avoid the one broken string. The concert was a huge success. Afterwards, Perlman commented, sometimes it is the artist's task to find out how much music you can still make with what you have left. So your plan A didn't work out. Are you going to reject God? Are you going to turn inward in self-pity? Or are you going to improvise a new arrangement for your life? Are you going to resubmit your life to God's control and 
find out just how much music you can still make with what you have left. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord made him prosperous again and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble the Lord had brought upon him, and each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. And after this, we're told that Job lived another 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. And so he died old and full of years. Note that verse 12 reads, the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. Now, how exactly could that be? For it says in Job chapter 1 that Job was the greatest man among all the peoples of the East. In the beginning, Job lost 7,000 sheep. God returned to him 14,000. Job started out with 500 donkeys. Now he has 1,000. We can do the math. But is the author of Job referring to material blessings? I doubt it. No amount of wealth can make up for the loss of all Job's children or the critical attitude of his closest friends or the neglect by his community when he needed them the most. So, how did God bless Job? The biblical author doesn't tell us, but we can gather a lesson from all those down through history who have suffered sudden, senseless, and savage losses. Nothing else prepares the heart for true joy like the power of suffering. Nothing else opens up the mind to new horizons. Nothing else sets our minds on eternity like the presence of pain. The blessings God bestowed in the second half of Job's life were joy, peace, assurance, and strength. These are the spiritual blessings that come through weathering a storm in the presence of God. A few years ago, a car accident claimed the life of Gerald Sitzer's wife and one child. And Sitzer was left to raise his other three children alone. He says that his grief has driven him closer to God. He cherishes each and every day and sees beauty in the most common of things. And he writes, I still want my family back and I always will, no matter what happens as a result of their deaths. Yet the grief I feel is sweet as well as bitter. Never have I felt so broken. Yet never have I been so whole. My soul has been stretched. Above all, I have become aware of the power of God's grace and my need for it. When we suffer, invariably, if we open ourselves up to the Almighty, we will discover God in a fresh, and wonderful way. Have faith in the extravagance of God's abundant love and mercy. For God's grace is a gift. And through Jesus, we are offered that gift in a free pass for all eternity. Yes, we all have storms once in a while. But remember,
God's love and mercy can overcome any storm, even a perfect storm. And God's unexpected forgiveness and grace can turn any storm-tossed life into a rainbow of beauty, truth, and goodness. You can't plan it, achieve it, order it, or make it happen. Just repent and trust the giver. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 7. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We, 
We pray for all who have died that they may have their place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, Peace. 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 Peace, everyone. Please be seated. Welcome to St. Andrews on this, the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. Special welcome to those who are worshiping with us from home as well. I invite those of you who are here today to come and join us for fellowship time after the service there in the parish hall. Call your attention to one announcement in the bulletin. Choral Even Song for All Saints is coming up here in the next two weeks on Sunday, November 7th, here in the church, 5 p.m., with Music for All Saints Sunday. I invite you to come and join us there and then attend the reception that is going to be in the parish hall afterward. Also, you can just watch it live stream on our Facebook page as well. I'm going to call on Adrian Love, who's from the Daughters of the King. She's going to come up here and have a word for us uh, about a cookbook, I believe. Good morning. You may have seen the announcement in the leaflets about calling all cooks. The Daughters of the King need your help. We are creating a cookbook to celebrate the 150 years of St. Andrews. And I know from the many wonderful dishes that I have experienced at coffee hours, potlucks, and Lenten dinners, that there are some wonderful cooks out there. There is a box in the back of the church and one in the parish hall where you can submit written recipes if you would like. Make sure you have your name on it and if, what category you'd like it to be under. And also if you have a sentence about who may have given you the recipe, that would be appreciated. You can also send your, your recipes via email to Paula Stewart and her email address is in the announcement. And we absolutely need your help to reach our goal of 150 recipes for 150 years. So we're looking forward to hearing from all of you, and we'll have you updates as to when the book will be out. The deadline for recipes is November 20th. So thank you. As you noted last week, we have just launched the annual campaign. If you didn't receive a pledge card in the mail, all you can pick up a pledge card and a return envelope on the table as you exit the church today. So with stewardship in mind, I'm going to ask Richard Felita, member of the vestry and also our treasurer, to come up and give us a word about stewardship. Thank you, Father Reese. I was asked to speak about what St. Andrews means to me, and it would take me all day. Uh, in 2006, uh, after we moved here from San Francisco to take care of aging parents, um, I was a bit lost after moving, living in San Francisco for 30 years. 
And a friend brought me here to meet another friend that he knew. And who would you believe I ran into? Or it greeted me immediately. Well, there was Nell Rohrbach, there was Pat Dickinson, and none other than Miss Marshall. And it became a place where I knew I wanted to be. So I've been, ever since I started coming here, I needed to figure out a way to give back. And if what I'm asking you today is, we've been around 150 years, and a lot of people came before us and did a lot of hard work. And now it's our turn to continue the work in this beautiful, sacred place to support Father Reese, the different groups and committees, the choir, to make this place viable for another 150 years. And it's not just your money that we are asking for, it's your time too, your talents, um, helping with the lunch program, teaching in the kindergarten or teaching in the, the youth programs, things that are needed around here, but we also need your treasures so we can keep the lights on, we can continue to uh, do things that make this place really viable for the next 150 years. Um, so think about that as you think about what you're gonna do for the next a uh, few years to really keep St. Andrews going as in the past. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
let's give glad thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.